In this last video, we were talking about uh, energy and, uh, or, and in emission and absorption spectra. And now I just wanted to show you a quick little diagram here that I think uh, might uh, reinforce things. So here we have a very specific one for hydrogen. So for hydrogen itself, we can look at how it absorbs things. And uh, so this here is actually what it looks like. Now we know that it's an absorption spectra because we see all the colors in the background and we only see black bands where it's sort of sucked up or you know absorbed the light. Remember, we can look back at this first uh, diagram here that I'd shown you to understand this. So if it's absorbing, that means we have some sort of light behind it and some sort of cold gas that's sort of sucking up these different wavelengths. Now we can look at the same thing for uh, emission spectrum, and we can see that uh, right here, well, this is really important. We can see that uh, the emission spectrum is black in the background with these colored bands this time. But notice they still happen at the same uh, wavelengths. In this case, remember on the x-axis, this is wavelength. On the y-axis, it doesn't really matter. Now this uh, hydrogen alpha line, this is an important one for astronomers, for example, because uh, if they want to look at what happens in, let's say, the sun or in uh, interstellar space, there's a lot of hydrogen out there. Hydrogen is by far the most uh, abundant. So if you're trying to look at what happens with gases uh, you know, between stars, so between us and really far away places, there's actually hydrogen gas all over the place. So by focusing in on this particular one, this is a nice one to use. So a lot of astronomers like this hydrogen alpha line. Now that our wavelength is supposed to be around 656 nanometers, and it corresponds to a transition from n equals 3 to n equals 2, which means if we looked at it over here on this diagram, that means it goes from this energy level 3 to energy level 2. That's what it does. So let's uh, take a look at a specific example. So this is a specific example here. We have an electron in hydrogen, just like we were looking at, and it undergoes a transition from energy state n equals 3 to n equals 2. The question is, what's the wavelength? And that means we want lambda. Uh, just to explain a little bit about this diagram right here, again, this uh, may seem a little bit strange here that uh, we're talking about um, uh, values here that we can do lots of different transitions. We can go from n equals 3 to n equals 2. So that's one that's possible, just to show you. However, there's other ones possible. If you start off at n equals 3, you can also go straight down all the way to n equals 1. You could also, let's say once it went down here, it can also go here. So just to show you, what if we were at n equals 4? If you started off at n equals 4, you could go um, down just to n equals 3. You could go from n equals 4 to n equals 2. You can go from n equals 4 to n equals 1. So do you see how there's lots of different transitions possible depending on what energy level you start at? Um, and each of these, remember, each of these drops will emit a photon and that photon will have an energy E equals HF, like we just looked at over here. Anytime it drops down, it emits a photon of that particular energy. HF will be your, well, F will your frequency. So in this case, then, uh, we're not looking for just any of them. Remember, we want particularly N equals 3 to N equals 2. But the question could have asked for any of them. It wouldn't really matter. All you need to know is know your energy levels here. Now, do you notice how they gave you energy in electron volts? Love to do that. So the very first thing I think to do is to try to find out, well, how much is your change in energy? Well, from n equals 3, it started off at uh, minus 1.51 electron volts, and we want to subtract from that uh, the other one, which is minus 3.40 uh, electron volts. Of course, if we do that uh, a little bit carefully, well, we're going to get a value of, uh, well, that's nice, it'll turn out positive. We'll get positive 1.89, yeah. 1.89 electron volts. So that's our uh, change in energy. Now we want to know the wavelength. And remember now, we can use this equation E equals HF. However, this equation only works if you use uh, energies in joules, if you're going to get frequency at least in regular units of uh, something like um, uh, hertz. So one thing we'll have to do, we're going to have to convert this energy into uh, Joules. Do you remember? Uh, I hope you do remember the uh, conversion factor for this. If we want to know, well, this is how many EVs we have, and we want to do something to it. We want to actually uh, multiply by that. So, um, so this is how many EVs we have, but we know that we have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 uh, joules for every EV electron volt. So that means the EVs would cancel out and we'd end up with joules only. 
And again, if you're not sure about that, you can always look up on your equation sheet. But uh, one electron volt, again, remember, it's just one charge of an electron times one volt. An electron charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So when you multiply that by volt, you get your units of joules. So here you go. In any case, we can actually do this and calculate it. I'll bring over my trusty little calculator. So again, I want to do 1.89 times. I'll put a bracket just to make sure. This really always has trouble with this. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. I do that and I get an answer of 3.024 times 10 to the minus 19. However, I'm going to use uh, three significant figures. So I'll say delta E equals, oops, I gotta remember what it was again. So it's 3.02 times 10 to the minus 19. Minus 19 joules. And I apologize, this seems to always uh, like to jump and connect dots when I didn't want them connected. So this is my change in energy in joules. Now I can find the frequency directly like this, but I actually want to find wavelength. So just, I mean, we could have actually found frequency next and from then found wavelength. I like to do it all at once. So you remember though that uh, V equals F lambda, that's your wave equation. But because it's light, C equals F lambda. I've shown you this before. Hopefully you're getting tired of seeing this uh, explanation. That hopefully means it's making sense as well. So if we want to replace F, we can say that F is the same thing as saying uh, C over lambda. So from my equation, E equals HF that I start with, I can replace that with E equals H. And instead of F, I put in C over lambda. So that I can do. Now, if I want to find lambda then, therefore, lambda is going to be, well, I move that up here, take these, so I have H times C divided by E. That's what I'm going to be doing. So in this case then, let's actually try to calculate. So I have my lambda then is equal to H. Remember, you can look this up on your equation sheet. H is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Loves to connect things. There we go. Times C, which is a speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All that divided by my answer of 3.02 times 10 to the minus 19. If I do that carefully, maybe I'll do it on the calculator. So luckily I can actually take, uh, I'll just start off at the top here, so 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. And I'll multiply that by 3 times 10 to the 8. Do that, and that I want to divide by 3.02 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, and I get, whoops, Careful. I should get a value of, yeah, so 3.58 times 10 to the minus 7. Uh, actually, it'll be 3.59, uh, sorry, 6.59 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. If I wanted to, though, I can also convert that to nanometers and get 659 nanometers. That's the same thing. Remember, because nanometers 10 to the minus 9, so I have to move my decimal over by 2. And if you look at this, this 659, does that correspond roughly to what we had uh, down here? It does. I mean, this is 656, but it's actually pretty close. Uh, it depends on how they actually calculated this and how many significant figures they used. But uh, 656 nanometers, that's your hydrogen alpha line. And if you look, we actually calculated it. We got something pretty darn close.